Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Bree and I have a service dog named Dallas. Um, on my channel here I like to talk a lot about service dogs and chronic illness things. Um, today I'm going to be sharing advice on how to answer weird invasive questions that you get when you're out in public with your service dog. Now if you have a service dog you know exactly what I'm talking about and if you don't have a service dog this is still a good video for you so that you can learn how to properly approach a service dog handler as well as what questions and comments are appropriate and what is not appropriate. So when a service dog handler is out in public it's very common that they will get asked weird questions, people will make weird comments, um, invasive questions, and for some reason people forget all about manners and personal privacy when there is a cute dog involved. Many people feel like they can just walk up to somebody and start asking all of these personal questions and they don't even know that person's name. So today I'm going to go over five comments and questions that I get as a service dog handler and I'm going to share with you kind of how I handle the situation, what I say to answer the questions, and I hope that's helpful because I want you to know if you do get asked these personal questions, don't feel obligated to answer. This person has no right to know what your issues are and they have no business asking. Um, so I hope that this video is helpful if you aren't comfortable answering those questions. It'll give you some ideas on how to answer them in a polite way. So number one, the most common thing that I hear when I'm out with my service dog, and I know that a lot of other service dog handlers here, is why do you have your service dog? What's the dog for? Do you have diabetes? What's wrong with you? That kind of thing. And that's just, all of those are very inappropriate, very personal, invasive questions to be asking a stranger. It is absolutely none of their business as to why you need your service dog. I never see somebody running up to someone in a wheelchair and asking why they are in a wheelchair. It's common sense. It's just what you do. I mean, you respect people's privacy, so I don't know why they feel so comfortable running up to somebody who has a service dog and asking why they need their service dog. If this happens to you a lot and you aren't comfortable answering those questions and you don't know how to handle the situation, let me give you some advice. One thing that I always like to say in that situation, if I'm not comfortable answering the question, is I'm sorry but I don't feel comfortable sharing my medical information with somebody that I don't know. Oftentimes it'll click in their head and they'll realize, oh my gosh, that was such a rude question for me to ask, I'm so sorry, they'll apologize, and they'll understand. Yet, sadly there are people out there who will get offended and they feel so entitled that they need to know what's wrong, they'll keep pressing on, keep asking the question, and get pretty mean about it. Um, so. I'm going to share with y'all a situation that happened to me a couple months ago where this person was not going to take no for an answer and I will kind of share with you how I handled that. So um, a few months ago I was at a service dog meetup with a few friends. There were about three, four dogs there at the time. We were sitting at a table eating and this lady comes up to us and just starts asking these questions, completely interrupting our conversation that we were having. She was demanding to know what the dogs were for, so I told her what tasks my dog does for me, um, which is object retrieval, balance assistance, medical response, um, and that's what I told her. However, that was not a good enough answer for her. She kept pressing on. She was getting very angry that I would not share my medical issues with her and her son who was standing right there, her little son, who she was wanting him to pet our dogs. So you can do a couple things in this situation when it gets to that level. Um, one, you can just get up and walk away. You don't owe them any information. You don't need to share anything with them. And two, if you feel awkward just getting up and leaving, you can just say, I'm sorry, I have to go. You can get up and leave. You can go talk to a manager and explain that this lady is harassing you. And that's pretty much all you can do in that situation. It's not fun, it's very inconvenient and annoying, but it happens sometimes. So technically I didn't even have to share what tasks my dog does for me because she was not an employee of the establishment that we were in. 
The ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, allows um, businesses to ask two questions, and that is, is that a service dog required because of a disability, and what task or work has the dog been trained to perform to mitigate the disability? Those are the only two questions they're allowed to ask service dog handlers. But this right to ask those questions is reserved for employees of the business, not the general public. People, customers, random people on the street have no right to ask you those questions and you don't need to answer them. Number two, I get asked a lot if my dog bites or is she friendly. And I would tell them, you know, no, my dog doesn't bite and yes, she is friendly. However, for some reason when I say that, they take that as a, oh, free invitation to go pet the dog. I never said you could pet the dog, I just said that she wasn't aggressive, she didn't bite. Um, so yeah, in that situation, what I would do if somebody asks those questions, I would just say, yes, she's friendly, she's very well trained, but she is working right now. And hopefully that will kind of let them know like, oh, I can't pet the dog, it's working. And if they do start petting the dog, I would just say, I'm sorry, she's working, please don't pet her. Um, but yeah, that's really all you can do in that situation. So number three, um, this comment is very annoying and it has happened sometimes for me, but people will come up to me and say, oh, my friend has a service dog, but she's actually disabled. She's in a wheelchair. And I know what they're trying to say. They're trying to say that I don't need a service dog because I'm not in a wheelchair. This is a very ignorant and rude comment to make, um, especially because you don't know the person. You don't know what's going on inside their body just by looking at them. So I do one of two things. One, I kind of educate them and say, oh yeah, well, um, service dogs aren't just for people in wheelchairs. There are many other disabilities that people can have a service dog for. I have an invisible disability, so just by looking at me, you can't tell what's wrong with me, but I do have health issues and I require a service dog to assist me. And then two, <laughs> sometimes you can just tell that they are just a petty person who's just going to be mean and try to cause problems. I just say, oh, and turn around and walk away. <laughs> but sometimes you just have to let it roll off and leave and not cause a lot of drama. Sometimes it's just easier to walk away than it is to try to argue with someone that you are never probably ever going to see again in your life. Number four. So when you have a service dog, you're going to be going into a lot of non-pet friendly environments like grocery stores, movie theaters, malls, hospitals, places like that that don't allow pets. And even though they don't allow pets, you're probably still going to run into untrained pets, untrained dogs, fake service dogs. And a lot of times these people are going to try to bring their animal over to greet yours. And that's not good when your dog's working, your dog can't be greeting other dogs. So one thing I like to say in that situation is I kind of put my hand out and say, oh no, I'm sorry, she's working. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't work and they just keep approaching you to let the dogs greet. So in that situation, the last thing that you can do is say, no, my dog's not friendly. And oftentimes then they'll realize, oh, that dog's not friendly. I'm not going to let my dog go over near it. And even though that's not true, it does protect you and your dog because they're not going to bring their dog over to greet your dog if it's unfriendly, hopefully. Um, the last thing you can do is just turn around and try and get out of there as fast as you can. Now, the reason I don't let my service dog greet other animals when we are out in public is because one, she's working, it's too distracting for her to be greeting other animals. Two, I don't know this other dog. I don't know if they're friendly. I don't know if they're aggressive. Um, I don't know if they're overly excited. I don't know them. I don't know if they have an illness or something wrong with them that they could spread to my dog. Um, you never know. And even though the handler of the other dog might say, oh, my dog's friendly. No, no thank you. Um, it's still not okay because even though the dog might be friendly at home, you never know how that dog is going to react when it is put out into an environment that is overstimulating and stressful. Um, I've seen it happen all the time. People tell me their dog's friendly and then their dog gets overwhelmed and starts acting out and they're like, whoa, my dog's never done that before. Yeah, because your dog's in a stressful environment 
you are stressing it out by bringing it here. There's a reason why service animals go through years of training and socializing to be able to handle these environments. And a lot of times, the dogs who go through the training don't make the cut and they just get booted from the program and become at-home pets. Number five, so this situation happens a lot and it's very annoying and frustrating when it happens, but it's when um, you're at the grocery store, you're in the self-checkout lane, and you're busy scanning items, putting them in the bag, paying for your groceries, and people just come up behind you and start distracting your dog, whether it be petting them, talking to them, putting their hands in their face, that sort of thing. So the hard thing about this situation is you're busy doing other things, so you can't very easily correct your dog, and you can't just walk away. So what do you do in this situation? I always start by saying, oh, I'm sorry, she's working. Sometimes that works, but for some reason, when we're in the self-checkout lane, oftentimes that doesn't work and they say oh it's okay I wasn't gonna pet her yet I turn around and see them talking to her and putting their hands in her face being just as distracting to her as if they were to pet her um I think a lot of people get the rule that they're not supposed to pet the service dog but they don't understand why there is that rule the rules there because petting the dog distracts the dog but making kissy noises, talking to the dog in a high-pitched voice, putting your hands in their face to sniff, that's also very distracting. I mean, if you're at work and somebody starts doing all of those things to you, kind of like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, you're going to have a hard time doing your job because it's very distracting. So now it is time for plan B since plan A didn't work. And I'll be honest, I am not good at plan B. I don't like having to do plan B. But what else are you going to do? You need to advocate for your dog. If this person isn't taking a hint and they're distracting your dog, it's not fair for you to have to keep correcting your dog when they're the issue. You need to just eliminate the issue, get them away, tell them to stop, pretty much. And at that point, you have to be pretty blunt about it. Um, so I just turn around and I say, I'm sorry she's working. I appreciate that you didn't pet her, but putting your hands in her face and talking to her is just as distracting. So would you please just ignore her altogether? And it's pretty blunt, but that's what has to be done. And they'll probably get offended. They'll probably look embarrassed and feel awkward. And when you get to your car, you're probably going to feel like a jerk when you're replaying the situation in your head. But it just, it needs to be done. They didn't give you any other choice. And this actually happened to me today at church. Um, I was standing and getting some things to take into church. Like, they, we have donuts and water and coffee and stuff. Um, well, this man comes up behind me, didn't even acknowledge me at all, just comes up behind me and starts putting his hands in Dallas's face and talking to her. Um, Dallas is a little rusty. I haven't been taking her out as much as usual. So she did get very distracted. She did go up to the man and she was distracted. So I just had to turn around and say, oh, I'm sorry, she's working. I said that and, you know, it worked. I just felt really bad because he looked really embarrassed and I just feel like a jerk when I have to say something like that, especially to somebody who's much older than me. It's just, it's really awkward, but they give you no other choice. It just has to be done because if you let it happen every time, your dog is going to get used to it. And your dog is going to just go up to everyone who tries to greet them. And that's not okay. A service dog needs to be able to ignore those situations. And yes, mistakes happen, but you just have to make sure and keep it consistent so that you can set them up for success for the next time that it happens. And I guess another thing you can kind of tell yourself to make you feel a little bit better about being so blunt is that next time that person sees a service dog team, they're probably not going to do the same thing because this time they didn't know but next time they will know that they're not supposed to distract the dog so you are helping out another team when you do that for the next time they run into another service dog but those were the five situations that happened to me weird comments questions and actions that people do towards my service dog when i have her in public 
Um, I would love to hear y'all's stories of situations that have happened to you as well when you have your dog out in public. So just put it in the comments and then I'll be able to kind of read and respond to those. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss on any future content that I post, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, but if you are interested in watching how to fly with a service dog, go through security, fly on the airplane, all of that, I have a video that you can click on here. And if you're interested in watching how a service dog meetup works, I have another video here that you can click on as well to see how that goes. But thank you so much for watching. See you next time.